Welcome back. I'm Eddie Muller. And if you know anything about me, then you know that today's movie is right up my noir alley. It's The Harder They Fall from Columbia Pictures in 1956. It's historically notable for being the last film made by Humphrey Bogart, an actor who truly merits being called a legend and a Hollywood icon. The movie has added significance for me because Bogart's character, veteran sports writer Eddie Willis, reminds me so much of my father, the original Eddie Muller, who spent his entire professional life as a sports writer, chronicling what's known to its aficionados as the sweet science. Well, there's nothing sweet about Bud Schulberg's depiction of the sport. His novel, adapted to the screen by Philip Jordan and directed by Mark Robeson, explores the cruelest and most corrupt aspects of boxing. Or to be more precise, the fight racket. When the movie came out, most people assumed it was a follow-up to On the Waterfront. That 1954 film, also from Columbia, and also written by Schulberg, explored corruption in labor unions controlling the New York waterfront. Marlon Brando played a washed-up prize fighter, and Rod Steiger was the mobbed-up brother who betrayed him. So there's more than a few similarities, not the least of which is the author's righteous indignation. But the fact is, Schulberg wrote The Harder They Fall well before On the Waterfront. The novel was published in 1947 as the sports writer's counterattack against organized crime's stranglehold on East Coast boxing. Dory Sherry, at the time still in charge of production at RKO, bought the novel with the intention of making it one of his hard-hitting message pictures. Robert Mitchum and Joseph Cotton were going to star with Edward Dimitrick directing. But when Sherry abruptly left the studio, new owner Howard Hughes sold the rights to Warner Brothers, where Bogart wanted to make it with Edward G. Robinson as a follow-up to their big hit, Key Largo. Eventually, in the wake of On the Waterfront, the book ended up at Columbia, shaped for the screen by writer-producer Philip Jordan. He and Schulberg made intriguing comrades. Schulberg was a high-profile, friendly witness before the HUAC committee, while Jordan spent much of the 1950s acting as a front for blacklisted writers. Whenever you see Jordan's name on a film of this era, you can't be too certain he actually wrote the screenplay. Now, most boxing films aren't really about boxing. Even the best of them, like Body and Soul, The Setup, Requiem for a Heavyweight, and Raging Bull, use the sport as theatrical metaphor. They're brutal fairy tales about suffering and redemption. The Harder They Fall, however, is actually about boxing, particularly the business of boxing. Schulberg based it on the true story of Primo Carnera, an Italian circus strongman who in the early 1930s was steered to the heavyweight championship by New York gangsters. Notorious mobster Oni Madden, nicknamed the killer, was the principal crook behind Carnera's speedy rise to the top. Now, Schulberg was too young to have witnessed this charade firsthand, so he based Nick Benko, the gangster played here by Rod Steiger, on a racketeer he was familiar with, Frankie Carbo. In the 1940s, this one-time mob assassin, officially charged with five murders, managed to remake himself as a boxing promoter and gain control over much of the sport. Along with cohorts Blinky Palermo, Eddie Coco, and Jimmy Doyle, Carbo ran The Combination, a crooked outfit that held sway into the 1960s. Now, to bring authenticity to the film, Mark Robeson cast many real-life fighters, including two heavyweight champs. Jersey Joe Walcott, who plays the gentle trainer George, had retired only three years earlier after a 23-year run that included epic battles with Joe Lewis, Ezard Charles, and Rocky Marciano. The character of heavyweight champ Buddy Brannon is played by Max Baer, still in great shape at 47 years of age. Now, the casting of Baer was a bit of irony. He challenged Primo Carnera for the heavyweight title in 1934, after the two had starred together in the film The Prize Fighter and the Lady. Myrna Loy and Walter Houston were on the undercard. Bear also fought and knocked out boxer Pat Comiskey, who here plays the ill-fated boxer Gus Dundee. 
Then there's journeyman fighter Joey Greb, whose actual unscripted interview is used to show the ruinous effects of a career in which he lost far more bouts than he won. Well, now I'm looking for work, I am. You are. Where are you living? I sleep in my car up at the ranch market, I do. You sleep in the car? Yes. To play Toro Moreno, now an Argentinian circus strongman, the producers used the time-honored PR hustle of a worldwide talent search for an unknown. And as it turned out, the right guy was close by. 24-year-old Mike Lane was born in Washington, D.C., and wrestled professionally under the name Tarzan Mike. He gives a touching performance as a big puppy dog thrown to the sharks. Now, one guy who didn't appreciate Lane's performance was Primo Carnera. He brought a lawsuit against the studio for invasion of privacy. It was tossed out. As for Bogart, he earned his usual stellar reviews. No one knew at the time that the exhaustion and fatigue he shows in the film was not acting. The cancer was advancing, and it turned out to be unbeatable. He gallantly did reshoots when his voice got too weak from coughing or his eyes too watery from stifling the pain. Bogart had one of the greatest careers and lives in the history of motion pictures. But no matter how big you are, the end always comes. And this was it. From 1956, Bogart's final screen performance, The Harder They Fall.